When you hear the word petite, Carmela, what do you think of? Well, like something little or small? Yeah. Would you ever expect to hear something called petite described this way? Grandiose, booming, and larger than life? Wow, I don't I don't think so. Yeah, me neither. But today we're going to learn about and taste and review a wine called Petite Syrah, and it's been described just like that. Wow, I'm excited to try it. Let's do it. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Wine Pair Podcast. I'm Joe, your sommelier of a recently flashed wine. Oh my god. I don't know what I'm doing. And this is my wife and my wine pairing partner in crime, Carmela. Hi there. And we are the Wine Pair. Wow, that was like, like multiple personality, Joe. Well, you know, it's like doing something and then I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, okay, a quick orientation for those of you who may be new to the podcast. In each episode, we learn about and taste and give our brutally honest review of three wines that are reasonably priced, which means under $20 each, and should be easy for you to find. Our podcast is made for people who want to learn more about wine, find new wines to enjoy, and just want someone to talk about wine in a way that normal people can understand, right? So if that sounds like you, you're in the right place. Petite or not. Petite or not you can, you can be petite yeah. or big or whatever but any size you're in the we right place any size we do no problem <laughs> we're we we it's true and we're proud to say that we are officially recommended by the editors of decanter magazine who call us fun irreverent chatty and entertaining mm. okay carmela we are back with one of our world famous often imitated but never replicated what the F or what the fuck episodes. Wow. And this week we're going to be talking about an often misunderstood and even less appreciated wine called Petite Syrah. Okay, I'm excited. Now, why do you think, Carmela, that Petite Syrah is so often confused and misunderstood? Well, I don't know. Maybe because it's people like, what the heck does Petite mean when it comes to a wine? And Syrah. Is it a small grape it is a small grape that's oh, very good you 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 read ahead i didn't but i also, actually didn't also syrah because it's not syrah like the wine syrah it's petite syrah it's right. actually totally different right okay so, that is confusing yeah so the spelling for petite syrah mm-hmm. is the the syrah in petite syrah is different the standalone syrah is spelled with a y right right while Petite Syrah is spelled with an I. I thought maybe I was going to have like a spelling test here. No, you might. You might. Later. I could I could smell the one with the Y. You could spell it and smell it. Smell okay. it and smell it. Okay. And what makes it even more confusing, we mentioned this last week in our episode on GSMs, because the S in Stands GSM is Syrah. Syrah. With a Y. Yeah. But sometimes, the well, the Australians call it Shiraz, so uh, that's yeah, a little bit yeah. confusing. And here's one more tidbit. Petite Syrah is also sometimes called Durif. Okay. Okay, which also has an I in it, by the way. Let's not go down that road. We'll go down there. We will go down there, but not quite yet. So it's not a huge mystery, at least to me, as to why people are confused and these two wines are confused. But to be clear, again, they are different wines and they're different grapes, but they are still cousins. Okay. Is that confusing? Um, I didn't know grapes could be cousins. Like, well, That's really they, confusing. Yes, yes, their parents are parents. Wow. They're, they're, what, one of their parents, their parents I don't, can't were explain, siblings. All of a sudden, oh my God, I can't explain cousins really, anymore. This really getting okay. strange. Okay. Well, let me actually... Somebody's going to like d- unsubscribe I, after that. Wow. <laughs> That's getting cut out. Okay. So let me try to explain quickly. Uh, and I got a lot of this information from a website called JJ Buckley. And you can find the link to that article in our show notes if you go to this episode. Okay. So Ra is originally from the Rhone Valley in France. And again, we just talked about Syrah in our last episode. And Syrah is a cross between two grapes called Dureza and Manduce Blanche. Mm. Okay. And Syrah, that Syrah with the Y is a small, dark-skinned grape. And it makes wines that are described as like bold and full-bodied and deep purple with moderately high acidity and tannins. Okay. Ooh, okay. Now, Petite Syrah is actually a cross between the grapes Syrah and another grape called Pelourson. Okay. 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 Now, Pelourson, I've never heard of before, but interesting. So it's a cross, like Petit so Syrah does Syrah come. Part. It's, it's like, you know. It's related. Right. It's, it's related, an but it's different. It's different. Okay. And this, this Pelos, Pelourson, I don't even know how to say it. It's actually a French variety from the Rhone Alps region, which is kind of bordering Italy and Switzerland. Hmm. And then again, outside of the US, the grape is known as Durif, and it's a small, dark, and nearly black grape. 
And again, we'll talk about the whole Duraf thing a little bit later. And Petit Syrah is high in both acidity and tannins versus Syrah, which is moderately high in acidity and tannins. Okay. And then sometimes in terms of flavor, Syrah is often described as being peppery and having red plum and blueberry and blackberry taste and smell and some floral aromas. Okay. While Petit Syrah is described as having tastes and aromas of black plum, not red plum, plum but black plum. So maybe richer or deeper? M- yeah. Or, okay. And smoky. Mm. And dark chocolate and coffee and caramel. So I think you're ooh, right. I think ooh. you're right. Maybe a little darker, a little richer, mm, mm-hmm, deeper flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So bottom line, first of all, don't confuse the two wines, okay? Don't. Don't do it. If you do, big we'll, trouble. We'll get mad at you. No, we'll we wave won't. our no. fists. No. No, we won't. You're right. Fingers. We'll wave our fingers. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll wag those fingers at you. Okay. And we're going to spend the rest of this episode talking about Petite Syrah, and then we're going to taste and review three reasonably priced and relatively easy to find p- Petite Syrahs, and they're all from the great state of California. But first... We got to do our shameless plug. That's right. So first, we want to start by saying thank you for listening to us and supporting our show. Hooray. And now would be a really great time to subscribe to our podcast. Mm-hmm. You just click that little subscribe button. It's a great free way to support us. And we thank all of you who have subscribed already. And another great way to support us for free is to leave a nice rating and review mm-hmm. so we can continue voicemail. to grow our listeners. Or voicemail. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But a rating and review. Right. Other people can see. That's uh-huh. right. Mm-hmm. I get it. And you can also follow us on Instagram. And now on threads. I know. I'm at the Wine Pair Podcast. I know. We don't want to like start in on that, but everybody, it's like an explosion of threads. I know. I'm and I'm okay, ladies and gentlemen, I handle most of our social media. I'm just telling um, you now. I'm just being it? honest. All of it. No, it's don't just some of it. Don't blame me for any of it. <laughs> yeah. Please. And on threads, I'm I'm just being really sarcastic. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to be really sarcastic. I don't really even sarcastic. understand what that means. I have never even looked at threads. At threads, it's just Twitter on Instagram. Don't don't worry about it. Whoa, that's that's whoa. for later. Okay, I need a tutorial. I, I will give you a tutorial later. Okay. After the show. Excellent. Okay. And you can also visit us on our website, thewinepairpodcast.com. And as we do every week, we're going to tell you someone we think you should tell about the Wine Pair Podcast. And this week, when you hear the word show, Shorty, we want you to think about the Wine Pair podcast and immediately tell the person you are talking to that they need to listen to our podcast. Do you think that person's going to be short? I don't know. But it doesn't. Yeah. So I'll I'll let I'll let it go. It brought more broadly anything that's associated with like what you said, like small size, petite, little, little. Right. Because why? Because why? Because of petite Syrah. You're so smart. Oh, my God. You made that one easy for me. I did. I did. Okay, Carmela. Uh, we're going to do a little edumacating right now on just what the F Petite Syrah is, okay. right? Because that's the name of the episode, What the F is Petite right. Syrah. So, you gotta, so we got to edumacate. Right, right. Okay. Now, if it's you have a little knowledge, buddy. That's right. So if you have been sleeping through most of the first part of this episode... <laughs> We, and hopefully you're not driving, hopefully too. Hopefully you're not driving and sleeping and, and drinking. drinking. Right. Mm. But it, it's not Little Syrah. Okay? Let's just be clear. Yes, they're cousins, but it is not a mini version of Syrah. In fact, sometimes P- Petite Syrah is described as a stronger and bolder wine than Syrah. Yeah. So I think it's interesting that it's called Petite Syrah. It's a little bit confusing. It's just a matter of what the grape size is? I think that's it. Huh. Okay, so now, as we mentioned before, Petite Syrah originally came from France, but today it is almost never grown there. Oh, wow. It is almost exclusively grown in California. What made them stop growing it there? I, I think it just got replaced by other grapes that they oh, liked thought, better. I thought maybe I was going to get the evil eye. Like, don't ask don't that ask because that. I haven't looked into it. I don't give her an evil <laughs> eye. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never given never. you an evil eye or the cutoff signal or anything today. like that. At least no, not no, today. Yeah. yeah. Now, there is a little bit of this petite syrah grown in other hot climate areas like Australia and Mexico and Chile and South Africa and Brazil. Mm. So it tends to be a hot weather wine, which okay. is why it's so popular in California. Now, do you want to hear the story of Petite Syrah, Carmela? I love when you tell me stories. <laughs> okay. Now, I got some of this information from a website called P.S. I Love You. Do you get it? P.S.? Petite Syrah. That's I right. Love you. And it's the Petite Syrah Advocacy Organization, which runs the site. Oh, my, there, there is, is such a, a thing? There is a Petite, there is an advocacy organization for everything, including oh, no Petite way. Are Syrah. Are we part of that advocacy no. organization? No, we okay. are not. But okay. we're advocating for Petite Syrah tonight. Yes. And if you are a Petite Syrah lover, you should you join. Might be an you should join. Yeah. You should join. Wow. Okay. And then I also got some really good information on a website called the Wine Cellar Insider. And you can find links to both of those in our show notes. Okay. Now remember that I mentioned that the grape is sometimes known as Duraf. Right. Well, that's because it was invented in the 1880s by a dude named Duraf. Okay. He was a botanist in southern France. Lucky guy. They and, named a grape after him. Yeah, and he married these two grapes. <laughs> 
Saran, whatever it is, and came up with Petite Saran. And their cousins to Saran. That's right. Okay. And, and soon after that, the grape made its way on a boat or whatever. To, it didn't fly because they didn't have planes at that time and made its way to California in 1884 in the city or area of Alameda. Hmm. That's around San Jose. And by 1900, it was a really popular grape in California, especially in Napa. And then by 1938, Petite Syrah had kind of reached its peak in popularity. Now, what's interesting is the grape was really popular with home winemakers during Prohibition. I wonder why. Well, I'm going to tell you. There's actually a few reasons why. First, it's a thick-skinned grape. And so it ships pretty easily. So Mm. they could grow a bunch of it in California and they could ship it around the country. And And it wouldn't get damaged or something. Exactly, because it's a thick-skinned little grape. Wow, that petite little small but mighty grape. Small but mighty like our daughter, Mm -hmm. like you were saying Mm -hmm. uh, during the break. Okay, second, it's pretty easy to grow, evidently. I don't know this stuff. And it's pretty hardy and, and can stand a lot of different climates, including really high heat. So it's not a risky wine or a risky grape to grow. Ah. So during mm. prohibition again, like hey, we're going to make this grape. It's, it's foolproof. It's kind of fool exactly. It's mm. kind of foolproof. And the third is that it creates really bold wines with intense flavors. We're going to find that out today. And so even home winemakers with kind of limited skills cuz you know, they're just they're stomping just, on them, right? Exactly with like, their bare feet and exactly. gross and but but mm-hmm. you know, if they want to make it at home, they could make a reasonably like a flavorful wine mm. no matter what because of the way that this grape sort of operated and then because it was high in because it's high in tannin and acidity it can actually be stored for a long time Uh and so it can it it meant people well yeah so it meant people could make a whole bunch of wine and then just put it in their cellar and not get worried about being caught for making more wine because it's just sitting in their cellar Ah. so there were a lot of reasons why it became really popular and again like i said by 1938 it was super popular Hmm. now interestingly enough by the 1960s production of petite sirah was cut nearly in half and then by the 1990s, it was cut in half again. Why? And so I, I don't know, actually. That's a really good question. And mm. I couldn't find any really great reasons why production was cut so much. But I think, again, probably like happened in France, other grapes, other wine grapes just started taking over because they became more popular. Hmm. So particularly in California, wine grapes like Cabernet and Merlot just became more popular. And so it probably just kind of fell out of practice. And then I think because of the type of wine that it made, too, maybe it was just too strong for people. But again, right. hmm. we're going to we're gonna uh, find that out. And again, Petit Sera also was really considered more of a blending grape than a standalone grape. Mm-hmm. It was often blended with Syrah, with Zinfandel, with Cabernet Sauvignon, and it would give the wines color and tannin and, and maybe tamp down on some of the jammy flavors that came from wines that are made in those hot climates. Mm. So I think another reason why is that maybe it became, it started to be used less and less as its own varietal. Right. And more as a, you know, blending grape. Then you don't need as much of it. Right, right. Because it's not the primary grape in any mix or blend. Mm, okay. Now, Petit Sera has had a bit of a resurgence since then. And according to the articles that I have, nearly a thousand winemakers use the grape in some fashion today. So it's a lot. I mean, that's a lot of people. And then people who really like powerful, dense, and tannic wines that go really well with red meat, they're probably going to like Petit Syrah. Mm, okay. Uh, well, yeah. Could be right up your alley. Yeah. But here's what I think. I think the name probably throws them off. I think if you're thinking about, I want a big, bold, red meat wine. Right, and you hear petite. Yeah, you're like, oh. Lame. Exactly. People. Come on. You can't, you but know, like, maybe judge you a sh- book by its color. That's right. You, but maybe you just need to call it Duraf. Oh, the Duraf. <laughs> I love the Duraf. I don't know. It sounds like a mean, you know, like Duraf. Uh, give me a piece of meat and some whoa, Duraf. Whoa. Yeah, anyway. So anyway. And a glass of Duraf. <laughs> exactly. Petite Syrah does make a powerful, fruity, hearty, dense, tannic wine. And it's, again, supposed to to pair well really well with these big heavy meaty dishes so like things grilled steaks and stews and barbecues Mm. so i'm super curious to try this wine i don't think we've ever had it before okay that's exciting i was just gonna ask i don't think we have because Mm. it's not really our style like this wouldn't be the style of wine Mm -hmm. that we would choose Mm. because we tend to not really like these kind of big what i call like punch Punch you in in the the face face. kind of wines and i think this might be a punch you in the face kind of wine. okay okay but you know what if we like it enough we might just have to become an advocate and i might punch 
myself in the face. I oh, would, wow. I wouldn't punch you in the face. Well, I was just going to say, that was, you know, that was a close call. Trouble. You're I, just about, you know, <laughs> yeah. sold yourself out there. <laughs> and people call the, hey, what's going on over yeah, at the, the Wine Fair podcast? podcast. <laughs> something's, something's in, they're having trouble. Hmm. Okay. So on that note, I think, I well, before I say anything stupider, uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about the specific wines that we chose for this episode. Okay, How give about it that, to me. Carmel? Let's just, yeah. Give, give it, it to me? What are you talking about? What just happened there? Are you egging me on? Hey, I At least you didn't say, suck it to me. (laughs) That's what I was going to say next. After you introduced the first one. Oh, we are so funny. Okay, so as usual, all the wines we have chosen for this episode are under $20, and all of them should be relatively easy to find Mm. because I bought them all on a Total Wine or at Total Wine. Mm. And actually, um, one of the wines I know can be found all over the place because I just saw it when we went to Costco last Mm. week. Costco! Yeah, so I saw it there. And I also saw it on wine.com. So a, a couple of these wines I know you can find Pretty much anywhere, if you really want to find it. Right. Hmm. And I do think Petit Syrah you can find. I don't think, because it's, uh, in the United States especially, since it's a very, like, California wine, I think you can find it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in Napa, are they still doing it? Yeah, yeah, okay. for sure. Okay. For sure. And in that area, kind of that northern, northern mm-hmm. uh, California kind of wine-growing region area, for sure. I also did try to find wines that were well-rated, but I have to say that... It was weird when I was putting the notes together for the show. I was kind of getting like mixed signals hmm. when I was looking things up. I felt like I'd look at one website and it would say one thing, and Wine.com would say another thing. About, like other, re- about reviews, just about the first... ratings and oh, reviews. Oh, yeah, it was okay. kind of weird. Hmm. So I feel like there's some scattered ratings for these wines, and hmm. I'm not really not real sh- consistent. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried that some of the accuracy is not perfect, and okay. it didn't come from Jack. Chat DPT, it came from Chat Joe PT. Whoa. Uh, so, Whoa. Is that, so, you're going to market that now? Yeah, yeah Chat Joe PT. Uh, so hopefully Just we ask. got something right. But uh, anyway, we're going to be open minded, right, Carmela? We're mm, going to be open minded about Petit Sarah. We're going to be open minded regardless of the ratings. We're just going to be open minded. Okay. I like anything petite. Now, the first one you do. Uh, I don't know what that means. Okay, so the first wine we're, we're going to try is definitely a wine that you should be able to find all over the place. It's the Bogle Family Vineyards 2020 Petite Syrah. I'm, I'm going to be really honest. I don't know if you remember this, but in one of our earliest episodes, we did a Bogle. I remember the name. And it was one of the worst rated wines we ever had. Oh, no. So I'm trying not to pre-bias. I'm trying not to Why pre-bias you. Why did you get you. this? You just want to like, give them another chance? You know what's really funny? Hmm. I have a question in my show notes that's, Carmela, why did I choose this wine? You already did it. Okay. Well, interestingly enough, mm-hmm. up to the 2019 vintage, wine enthusiasts consistently gave this wine a best buy. Wow. And the tw- this is a 2020, but the 2019 got 90 points from wine enthusiasts. Okay. And then Wilfred Wong, and he's the wine.com in-house reviewer. He says that this has always been his favorite wine from this winery. Wow. Uh, But again, I'm a little bit not totally confident in the information I got on wine.com because the wine wine.com lists this as a 92 rating from Wilfred Wong. Mm -hmm. But then in the tasting notes that they have on wine.com, Wilfred Wong says that he was tasting the 2021 vintage. So I don't know. Hmm. It's a little bit off. But I will say between wine enthusiasts and Wilfred Wong, they're giving some good indications that this Bogle might be okay. Okay. Now Bogle on their website calls this wine their heritage varietal. Another little story here. Petit Syrah is evidently the first red wine that the Bogle grandfather planted in 1968. Oh, wow. And and they do say that they aged the wine for 12 months in American oak. And for our friends out there, American oak can be pretty oaky. It's like a pretty uh, strong really? oak. Yeah. So I'm expecting some wood and vanilla. This is probably going to be a powerful wine. Okay. I'm guessing. Okay. The second wine we're going to drink is called Michael David Petit Petit. And and I think you'll recognize... Little, little. Little, little. My exactly. Goodness. A little, little, little. little. Um, I, I think you'll recognize a Michael David wine when you see it because they have really kind of like these outrageous uh, labels that uh-huh. look like circus. And so this one has that as well. Mm-hmm. Their Cabernet Sauvignon that I reviewed with Joey about a year ago mm. is called Freak Show. I mean, it's just oh. like, there's they're kind of like these outrageous fun yeah, labels. Yeah, fun. I'm excited yeah, about Yeah, totally. That. And this is the one that I also found at Costco. Mm. And this wine is not 100% Petite Syrah. They say they mix about 15% Petite Verdot. So that's why they call it Petite Petite. Oh my, two Petites. And what's interesting is 
Petite Syrah is the petite is spelled with an e at the end, and uh-huh. Petite Verdot doesn't have an e at the end of petite. Oh, more it's French. It's the more French, exactly, mm. exactly. So that's where the petite petite came from. Mm. Okay. And do they say petite petite with different spellings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. On the label, on it's the label. Petite, okay. Petite. Yeah, Cute. with first one with e, the second one without. Mm-hmm. Now I am a little bit nervous on this wine based from the description. This is the one that I talked about in our our little intro. It's supposed to be a large, weighty, knock your socks off type of wine. That's how okay. they. Back to the knocking it. things off and oh, knocking things I'm sorry. out. I'm sorry. Okay. Jeez. Okay. No, but okay. Trying to trigger me here. But I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be open minded. But again, I'm expecting a really typical big fat California red wine. And again, those t- don't tend to be our super favorites. Hmm, but this will be, be interesting because we're gonna have to be. We are going to have to be open-minded. We're we going to have totally. to really think about those people who love this type of wine. No, to- totally. Because there's going to be people, you're right, there are people who love big who wines. Who are very different than us. Yeah. So, so take it with a grain of salt. If we say, ooh, it's too much for us, you might be like, just my ding, kind ding, of wine. Ding, ding, Give ding. me that Duraf. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, wine Enthusiast gave it a 92 rating. That's a very high rating. Mm. But interesting, they said it's not best until 2028. So we also may be a little wow. bit early in drinking this wine. Wait, what, what's the year in the wine? This is a 2020. So it's it's it's, okay. it's still going to be a little bit young. Okay. What I would say is it's ra- pretty rare to find a wine under $20 that you're told to sell her for 8 to 10 years. Like, that's not super common. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is an interesting wine. And I'll just say, too, for our friends out there in listening land, I have opened up these bottles. So they've been getting some air. And I think that's important for big wines. So wait, you may have just said this. So I don't know. But like, okay, how can you review? a bottle if it hasn't been aged for as long as they're suggesting well i think reviewers know i think review good reviewers they can, say, can ah, tell in five years yeah yeah it's going to be better i mean sometimes your dad and i will drink a wine and we'll say oh it's, it's good but it's not quite ready yet okay so i think if you are familiar with wines you might say oh the potential is there and then the other thing that I'm going to tell you why I'm worried that it's going to be a punch you in the face kind of wine which i probably wow. shouldn't say anymore oh, is that it's 15 percent alcohol yeah that's high. Okay. Wow. The last wine we're going to try is the 2020 Kaleidoscope Petite Syrah. And I chose this wine because I thought I saw some information online that it got a 90 rating from wine enthusiasts, but I'm actually not so sure that it's true because <laughs> I couldn't find it anywhere else except for this one website. Uh, so, and then, you know, I saw the bottle at Total Wine and it's I like the name. Kaleidoscope and I think I got hypnotized <gasps> a little bit. Whoa. So I think, I think maybe I got confused. I got okay, confused okay. by it. The wine is made by the Michael Mondavi family winery, as far as I can tell. Although online, I couldn't find a lot of information from Michael Mondavi winery about this wine. So I'm totally confused. Hmm. I think you can find it in a lot of places. It was at Total Wine. So that's a big, you know, national right. chain of wine stores. But, you know, the weirdness about the ratings and where it can be found and nobody really taking credit for it anymore. And it's a, I think it's wow, a, a lot of mystery yeah. around these wines. And, and it's a, it, I don't know. I, I, I'm a little bit, we're, but we're going to be open minded. Whoa. Okay. I guess we're going to have to be. And this one is actually the most expensive wine of the bunch. At $14.99. So there you go. Okay. So this is either going to be the best wine tasting we've ever done because we're going to find something just that shocks us or it's going to be a train wreck. I'm okay. just going to give it one okay. or two. One, or, one of one those or the two other. things. That's right. Mm. But you're going to have to hang on to find out, people. Right. Because we're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, we're going to take a break. Don't just think, you know, you're going to pause us or that's, something. That's right. And by the way, while we're doing our little outro, intro, whatever music, maybe grab a glass of wine and drink along with us. Nice. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back and we are ready to try our first Petite Syrah. This first one is the Bogle Family Vineyards Petite Syrah. It's from California. It's not a specific area in California. It's all over California. 2020 is the year. It was only $8.97 at Total Wine. Weird, 97? Well, I think they that's when they're starting to like mark something down a little bit. Oh. Again, got it a at penny? Total Wine. Yeah, t- two mm. pennies, sorry. Mm. Uh, 14.5% alcohol. So this is a higher alcohol wine. Mm-hmm. As far as I know, it's 100% Petite Syrah. It, I don't think it got a professional rating, but it has in the past. And what are you smelling, Carmela? Well, let's just first say you noticed, and I did too, oh, yeah. how dark it's it is. Super and dark. It's purple. Like, like it looks like grape juice. That's what you said. Yeah, grape juice, yeah. which I t- fully agree with. And it's weird because it is grape juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, haha. Um, I'm getting some fruit on it. Mm-hmm. Some plum. A lot of fruit. I think I'm getting a, like plum. I can kind of feel like it's a dark plum. Mm-hmm. I think I'm getting. I'm getting some rose on it, I feel okay. like. I'm getting flowers, rose, something rosy kind of smell, flowery kind of smell. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a little bit of tar, I think, too. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little smoke. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I'm getting dark fruits, but I'm kind of getting, I maybe this is too typical for me, but I am getting like a cherry, like a dark cherry. Yeah, no, I'm thinking that, I mean, that's where, you know, I was going to go next, but, you know, the plum just seems a little more interesting. It does. You know what I'm kind of smelling, actually? Mm. I know maybe it's in my head because of some of the descriptors. One of those cherry cordial candies. Oh, the chocolate, chocolate and ones. cherry. I can, I can get behind. With Ooh. even a little alcohol in it, you and know they I, are they're alcoholic. And yeah, and you I know, but those. but you know they have alcohol in them. You because you can smell, that smell as well. a little bit of it's a little hot. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. A, it does smell a little hot. Mm. Okay, I think we try it. Okay, mm. it's ooh, it's it's, it's strong. good. It's strong, but I don't feel like it's a punch you in the face as much ooh. as I was expecting. It's to me, it's like. Super jammy, fruit forward. Like it doesn't linger. I will say it kind of comes off yeah, the tongue. I don't feel like it's, it's got some good drying. It's got a lot of tannin. Mm-hmm. But I also I feel like it's kind of smooth, smoother than I would expect. Have expected, yeah, yeah. And um, but no one thing. thing about this wine, which we say a lot of times about those big, bold, fruity wines, is that this could be a standalone wine. You could just drink this and not. It's totally. not like it has to have food with it, or that the food is gonna make it better or you're going to enjoy it more it's one of those like it's like a meal yeah i'm it's with a you. weird thing but mm-hmm. you know you could just people i think that's what they like when they're drinking sometimes to so just be able to have a glass of wine this reminds me of one of those 100 percent. no mm-hmm. I, I fully agree with you i'm trying to pick- like jammy what kind of what flavor of jam well, I kind of feel like a real like a blackberry or a blueberry, some sort of like it's a sweet, jammy mm-hmm. kind of taste. But there's also something on the back end of it that's a little bit smoky, maybe a little cedar or wood mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. char like a like a charcoal fire or something. I'm getting a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting kind of that black cherry mm-hmm. though too. Yeah, kind of a dark black cherry. Yeah, jam like the black. You know, like if I'm thinking of a flavor of a jam, I think it's good. I, I don't. I'm liking it. I'm glad you're liking it. It is not. It's not overpowering. It's not like, but it's very rich. Like, it's it's rich, rich. And when you taste it, you're tasting wine. This is a wine. I think people who like big red wines would will they really would enjoy like. it. They yes, would enjoy it. I agree. And for eight dollars and ninety nine cents, my God, I'll like, buy you know, it all day. Yeah. What would you eat with this wine? Well, I do think this would be nice. I don't think it's overly fancy. I mean, no. I think you could do like a burger. I think you could do, um, you know, like I keep thinking of those little like lambsicles or okay. something yeah. like that, you know, I mean, which are kind of fancy, but not, you know, I just think they would cu- couple well with this. What yeah, do you I think, think? grilled, I think grilled food, grilled red meats would be good. I will say, I think you said this, but it's a kind of a bolder wine, but it's not very, it's not very complex. It's got some richness to it. But it's not very complex. Right. So I don't think you need anything complex with it. I think a burger would be good. I think grilled meats on the barbecue would mm-hmm, be good. Like mm-hmm. you, like I think you'd be happy with that. Barbecue would actually be good. I think really I, good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think like a barbecue, a tri tip sandwich, or Ooh. you know, barbecue ribs, or something like oh, that. Like ribs baby, would be really nice baby back this. ribs would be really good. Yes. This is a good summer like cookout or barbecue, like slow roasted meat. Right. You know, like on a I think smoker. Be, yeah, it'd be very compatible with that. You wouldn't feel like it, this is overpowering no. any of those things. I don't think so. I think it would complement it. Yeah, it's pretty mm. smooth. Okay, so um, we're going to rate it. So as a reminder on our rating scale, we rate on a scale of 1 to 10, and 7 and above means we're going to buy it. And 4 and below means we're going to pour it down the sink, and a 5 or 6 means we're going to drink it and we're going to finish it, but we're probably not going to buy it. So, Carmela, what would you rate this Bogle Family Vineyards Petit Sera? I think that I'm going to give it a six. Yeah. I'm in the same boat. And here's what I think. This is our tasting. This is the way we taste wines. I think for if you like bigger, bolder, richer red wines, uh, you would give it a higher score. Like some of the six to us, six to me means I like it. I'm drinking it, but I don't think I would buy it, but I wouldn't buy it because it's just not my style of wine. Right. However... However, what I will say is if I were doing a cookout, I would really think about buying, and having a bunch of people over, I would really think about buying well, this wine. Well, and I also want to add that I would buy this for somebody else who totally. I know would perhaps enjoy like, it. Yeah. I do think that this is a, a, I mean, it's not something where I'm tasting it and like, oh, I would definitely, if I was somewhere and drinking it, I would enjoy it, yeah. finish it, no problem. Yeah. So not offensive. Mm-mm. It's a nice wine. I think people smooth. would enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Smooth. Uh, again, not our quite our style, but if you, I think people would like this wine mm-hmm. a lot. Okay, we're going to take a pause and we are going to try our next wine. All right. 
Okay, we are back and we're ready to try our second wine. This is the Michael David Petite Petite. It's from Lodi, California. It's a 2020. It was only $12.97 at Total Wine. Uh, again, I saw it at Costco and Wine.com as well. It's 15% alcohol. Now, this is the Whoa. one that... I know, it's a lot. And this is the one that's 85% Petite Syrah and 15% Petite Verdot, hence the name Petite Petite. And wine enthusiasts gave this a 92 and before we drink it, I think a few things. One is it's super dark. It's oh my God. very like, purpley. Do not spill this on your carpet. Don't spill it on your carpet. Take out those teeth whitening strips as yeah. soon as you have it because... Brush your teeth right wow. after you have it. This it, is going to like darken stain. everything. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then describe the bottle, Carmela. Oh my God. I love this bottle. Um, it's a great gifty bottle, and the shape is so strange. If you have petite hands, um, you can it's hardly get a, it. Or, you can't hardly get your hand around this. Yeah, thing. it's actually not a petite bottle. No, not at all. <laughs> but it's like it is. It's like a circus. I don't know if it's like a circus sideshow. Going the bottle. On here? The bottle reminds me of the bottles that Turley uses with the really wide bottoms, and they're actually very difficult to sell her because yeah. they're just such a weird oh, shape. Yeah. But it's amazing. This cr- and there's like a the back of it looks like a ticket to the circus. Yeah, it's really cool. It's yeah. a cool bottle it, for it's a, a great, gift. Oh. This would be a fun gift to give to somebody. Right. Their wines have again these great this could labels. Could be decor too. Total, totally. Totally. Okay, what are you smelling? I want to say there's a little bit of dirt on it, mm. and even like um, like smoke, but like um, new smoke from a fire. Mm. You know, um, I get that. If you swirl it, you get that. Yeah, I think when it's sitting. It's super, it's grapey. It smells grapey. It's very jammy. To me, it mm, smells like a mm. blueberry jam or a blackberry jam or some sort of berry jam. Okay. Hmm. So this is very sweet and, so and Are rich. you getting more fruit and jam off of this one? Totally. Okay. It's sweeter. It smells like a jam to me it almost, or a pie. It almost smells like a blueberry pie. Are you getting some spices on a it? A little bit of spice. A little bit of spice. Hmm. Maybe, but uh, warm spices. Right. Not... Are you getting baking spices or warm More of a warm spice, too. Like peppery. Oh, no, I'm kind of getting a a little bit of baking spice. Oh, you are? Okay, I was thinking more... I was maybe if I am, it's a cinnamon, but I was thinking more like paprika almost. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm not... I don't know if I'm getting that, but Hmm. I like it. Okay. Well, let's taste it. Oof. That's a big flavor. This is this is almost like liquor, like this it's like hard liquor. This is like I'm gonna punch you in the face. This is a <laughs> this is different than the last wine yeah. because it is a fat mouth feel. Yeah, exactly. It's a big Intense. mouth feel. It stays in your Full. mouth. The bogle kind of like wiped off your tongue. It was kind. This is kind of sticking around. It's got a really sweet aftertaste. Yeah. Like I'm tasting berry pie. Yeah. I'm tasting yeah. a blueberry pie or a blackberry pie. It Don't almost you? tastes like hard liquor though. It's like a syrupy. Syrupy. Yeah. Almost syrupy, sweet. Yeah. Jammy flavor to it. Yeah. That's it's what I agree. That's why I'm saying pie. Cause yeah. It, and then it's just got that fat feel like almost like you want to have some ice cream. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> ice cream and it might be not a bad idea. Not bad. Not mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. Yeah. No, but this is, this is typical of like. The type of wine that we don't really drink. Mm-mm. And it's big. But some people would probably really love this. And I do think it probably is a little young. It still tastes a little hot to me. It's got some alcohol in it. Like, it probably needs to mellow out a little Ooh, bit. Yeah. But this is like, I feel like I'm going to breathe fire. Yeah, it is one of those. I feel Your like mouth light... feels kind of hot after <laughs> I feel having like it in I, I could light a match and like <sighs> blow. This is, could be a winter <laughs> wine, too. I don't know. Winter... This is going to be a Ugh. heater. If we ever had a heater. <laughs> this is a heater. This is a heater wine. Oh like you only need a few sips and you're going to start like you're feeling, feeling flushed. I'm sorry. I might be getting drunk off of it. It's 15% alcohol. Oh my God. Like it's, yeah, slow it's down. It's a big, big wine. Yeah, it is. Well, it's kind of, you know what? It is kind of fun in that sense though. Well, just like the label. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel like it would be kind of a, I don't even know what you would eat with this. What would you eat with this? Oh, I think this is a, like I, I could see this with big meal Juicy like a big beef. fat steak yeah like a big red meat raw potatoes like potatoes and beef yes 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 yeah yeah, yeah steak yeah. and potatoes totally <laughs> it's a steak and potatoes mm. it's a stew a mm. big big rich stew so kind of wine see, is, what do you think the whole um circus scene has to do with this wine uh, you know i don't know i'm sure there's some story about it but they all their labels are kind of these circus scenes mm. so i think it's just mm-hmm. kind of part of their thing but it's a bit i mean this is a big wine I, I think oh. if you like big, again, not our type of wine, but if you like a big red wine, I'm laughing because it's so big. And it's not like, a, it has nice flavor. Mm-hmm. I think it's a nice tasting wine. It's just 
a lot for what we typically drink. So yeah. that's why I'm feeling because you know sometimes we drink wine and we're like, oh, like that is, should not that doesn't belong in your body. Yeah, this is oh, not no, not like at that. all. This is a nice wine. Not at all. So this is again one of those when we rate it, I, you're just gonna have to take our taste into account because we like lighter wines. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't know that I'm gonna give it a, a rating for somebody who likes big red wines. It's really gonna you know something they would agree with, and that's fine. Just know right. that if you like a big red wine with a lot of flavor. And juice. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a juicy, juicy wine. Right. I so agree. This would be fun to drink with somebody who really loves these wines. Juicy wines. Like, if we... That's where I... Like, I'm thinking about my rating. I would buy this for somebody else. Yeah. So, what are you going to give it? So, it's hard because I, I wouldn't... I would not choose to drink this normally. I would have a glass of it and be fine. It would be a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I could drink a whole glass at 15%. I know. It's a lot. Holy cow. I feel I feel like I am going to get drunk off of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, we're not going to be doing that. Oof. But <laughs> so. I <Light> still <laughs> feel like I can light my breath. I don't know, though. I'm really struggling between the six and the seven. Because Me too. I'm fully with you. I don't know. I know we can't do halfsies. So I'm going to say I'm still going to give it a six. Okay. For the, uh, for the label alone, though, I would give it a fat eight. <laughs> I'm going to give it a seven just because okay. I think. I might, I would buy this, maybe I'm not being fair to the Bogle, but I would buy this for a different reason than I buy the Bogle. The Bogle, I would buy for a party. I wouldn't buy it for myself. I'd buy it for a party for because it's less expensive. This one was not very expensive. This one, I think I would buy for somebody, like you said, who really a likes gift. a big... It might. Yeah, a gift. Mm. Wants a fun bottle, a big bottle of wine. I like that idea. Okay. Well, let's take a break, and we're going to try our last wine. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we are back and we are ready to try our last wine. This is the Kaleidoscope Petite Syrah. It's from California. It's a 2019. It was $14.99 at Total Wine. It's only 13.5% alcohol. So compared to the other two, it's not as high in alcohol. It's Petite Syrah, 100% Petite Syrah as far as I know. And I think wine enthusiasts gave this a 90 rating and a Best Buy, but I'm not sure if I can actually trust that. Okay, so... Let's, uh, what are you smelling on this wine? Okay, so I'm getting, I'm getting smoke again, but it kind of smells sour. Hmm. I'm getting more flowers. This one's flowery Okay, too. okay. Yeah, but uh, maybe like a rose or something? Rose petals? Like in terms of what type of flower? Yeah. As I swirl it though, I'm getting more like earth, vegetal. It's not as pleasant when it's swirled around. It's actually better when it just kind of sits in the glass. Hmm. It's got some, it's got fruit, but it's grapey. It smells grapey to me again. Mm. Okay. Hmm. Spicy. I'm smelling some spiciness. Pepper again? Mm-hmm. Okay. Pepper again. Okay. Or paprika, you said on the first one. I mean, I'm the getting one. that sour now. I, I see what, what you're is, saying. Yeah. I'm getting that sour. Is it like um, like a sour cherry? Like an underripe cherry? Or is it almost like orange? Vinegary almost. Okay. I know. I might, it's almost a little citrusy to me, which okay. is probably weird. No, I can buy that though. I like a blood orange. Yeah, something rich. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, let's try it. Wow, it totally tastes, different. It tastes really sour. It's super sour. Yeah, tart. Yeah. Hmm. It tastes citrusy. It tastes like an orange. It has an like orange, an orange taste. rind too. Yeah, but I'm thinking like it tastes like an orange. I know. So. I don't know why that is. It's weird. I don't. This is not what I would have expected. Mm-mm. Doesn't taste like the other two at all either. It's a it's a big taste. It's rich. Oh, you not, don't like it. Mm-mm. You don't like uh, it. Kaleidoscope hypnotized mm. you, honey. Ugh, it it doesn't, doesn't taste like even like wine. No, it doesn't have the boldness of the others. It doesn't have the mouthfeel of the others. This is not a very good wine. Oh my God, wine. he's closing his eyes, shaking his a, head. He's not a very so good wine. disappointed in this wine. It's like, it almost tastes like tart and sour and orange. Not like really oranges. red fruit. I no, can't get a lot of red no. fruit off of this guy. <laughs> it's hard to drink. I'm finding it very difficult to drink. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd be able to finish this glass. No, no, I don't want to drink anymore. I'm, I'm <laughs> well, actually, I take it back. It's one of those things you know, where you smell something bad and you're like, ooh, and then you want to smell it again just yeah. to make sure you ooh, smelled it. Ooh, yeah. It's kind of like that. No. Like, I kind of want to taste it again just to, doing, <laughs> just to make sure, like, okay, I'm going to do it again. Ooh. It just wants me to, like, pucker, mm. wants me to pucker up. It's got, it's not, is it vinegary, but it's kind, it's kind of vinegary. It's a little bit, I don't think it's weird, though. No, no, no. I don't think it's a turned wine. I also think this is going to be weird, maybe, too, but this, sh- this is room temperature, like it yeah. normally should be drank, but I almost feel like <laughs> it, it should, should be cold. It, yeah. yeah, just like, 
Put an ice cube in it. Yeah. <laughs> Water yeah. it down a little bit. Ooh. No, no. What um, what food would you pair with this petite Oh, You want food just because I, I don't know. know you actually. can't drink this on its own. I don't think you'd have it with what food is it going to complement? Well, you might want to have something big to kind of, you know, wash it out. Blech. I don't know. I don't, I just don't think that I want to eat with this though. The aftertaste, I'm telling bread. you, you are exactly bread. right. Yeah, bread. Huh? Uh, I'm getting orange rind. Yeah, I don't. It's kind like of like the orange peel. Right, right. That is, it's kind of, you take a little bite of it and you don't really love it. Yeah. But it has that little bit, like if it's a zest, it's yeah. okay. But like yeah. a bite of it just is Ooh, too, too intense. Mm hmm. Hmm. I don't really food to pair. I don't. I don't think I would pair food. I don't, I don't think it's very good. What what rating are you give this? I'm gonna wine? give this one. Uh, oh, this is bad, but I don't think I'd. Fin- I mean, I'm thinking like a four. Oh, I'm I'm giving I mean, it a generous three. Okay, a okay. generous three. Oh wow. Okay. Like it's my. I don't know why I'm not giving it a two. Yeah, it's not because I'm not gonna finish it. Mm-mm. The only reason I would drink more is to kind of like you know punish myself a little bit. Like if I had punch a penance, you in the face. if I had a penance or something <laughs> that I needed to do, I would. But it's it's a bad wine. I'm sorry. It's not a good. Wine. I'm sorry. I'm still. sure there's people out there that really like it. I'm, mm. I apologize. Is it 100 percent petite syrah? That's what I think, but it just mm. doesn't even taste like the other ones. No, it doesn't taste like no. the other ones. They, something went sideways. Yeah. Now, uh, before we say which wine we're gonna finish tonight. Are you going to change any of your ratings on the other two? Um, hmm. Again, like both of them I would buy for somebody else. Yeah, maybe not so for myself. So that's hard. Like that's, yeah. I, you know, and the first one I think I could drink and enjoy. It's, I, if I'm More boost, than the second one. I think so. Just because the second one's too big, maybe. Too big for me. Yeah, I think so. But okay. I'm going to keep them the same, okay? So what wine are you finishing tonight? Um, I, The first one. The Bogle. Mm-hmm. So you're going to do the Bogle. The Bogle. And I'm actually going to do the Michael David. Okay. I, 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 it's a it's good a, wine. It's not my style, but there's something intriguing about, about mm-hmm. it and mm-hmm. kind of like fun. And I don't know. The Bogle was not bad, though. I mean... I came in, I'll be honest, I came in expecting to really hate it. I'm so And I'm they, so on the verge. They redeemed themselves T- totally. after the last time we tried them. Yeah, I'm really on the verge of, I would I almost want to give that one a seven, but I think you're right. Like, I just wouldn't buy it for us. Yeah. Uh, which is fine. And then what's your, what do you think about Petit Syrah? Like, I, what's your You know what, I'm happy about it. I think that especially if it's, it's more, for me, I'm enjoying it more than some of the other big, bold like Cabernets that yeah. we've had, some mm-hmm. of those other ones that we really kind of... Not know, so sure about. Not, yeah. So I would go for a Petite Syrah. Okay. I like it. Me what too. What about you? Yeah. Well, it's on the list now. It's on the list. Oh, but good. It would have to the be good a very, list or the bad list? Well, have to, a good list, but it have to be a very specific occasion why I would drink and it. And who we're drinking it with. Yeah. yeah. That's what I kind of love about trying these wines is all of a sudden you're like, oh, this would be really great to drink with... Yeah. So and so. Exactly. But I think you're right. Like, uh, if I had to choose between this and a Cabernet Sauvignon, I think I'd choose this. I think I would. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the taste profiles expected from a Petite Syrah. Okay. Wine Folly says the general is sugar plum, blueberry, dark chocolate, black pepper, black tea. Good. Bogle, the winery says deep purple in color with aromas of freshly baked berry cobbler, hints of vanilla wafer and anise, soft supple uh, with. Plush blue fruits, boysenberry, black plum, and nutmeg spice on the palate. Mm. Empire Wine says, The wine is impressively inky, dark, and luscious. Supple fruits, including wild blackberry and Oregon blueberry, are distinct. To- savory notes of toasty oak combined with mocha and hints of salted caramel. Ooh. Okay. Michael David, the winery says, It's grandiose, booming, larger than life. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I would agree. Ripe summer berries, bing cherry, and worn leather. Flavors of plum, boysenberry, dark chocolate. And then Wine Enthusiast says this intense, inky, extra ripe wine takes concentration to the next level. I agree with that. Mm. Saturated with dried plum, black raisin, and blackberry jam flavors Okay. on a tannic but still smooth texture. I was definitely mm. getting that. Mm-hmm. And again, they said it's best from 2028, so it's not quite ready. Mm. And then the Kaleidoscope, the winery says, presents vibrant flavors of blueberry plum and espresso. I, don't, I didn't taste any wow, of those. Wow. Mm. Okay. Well, that, that was, was it. Really That's all on the kaleidoscope. Yeah. Now, Carmel, I'm going to do something right now. Okay. I'm going to give a little shout out to some fellow wine podcasting friends we've made recently. Um, we agreed to do a shout out exchange. And so here goes to okay. our friends at Wine Road Podcast. Planning a trip to Sonoma Wine Country? Check out Wine Road Podcast for the wine, when, and where of northern Sonoma County. Tune in for the latest happenings in the region at winerodepodcast.com. 
Awesome. And we'll have a little link to their website where you can catch their episodes and our show notes. And they'll do the same thing for us a little bit later. How, How about that? Cool. Yeah. I love that. Kind Supporting of fun. They reached, advocates for each other. Yeah. They reached out to us and said, hey, would you be willing to do this? And I'm like, I, I think so, but I don't know how to do it. And they were like, it's easy, dummy. Do this. <gasps> they didn't say dummy. They wouldn't do that. No. They're too nice to do that. Very nice. Yeah. Fun podcast. I've listened cool. to several of their op- episodes. Super fun, hmm. pleasant. Like they love got it that they nice focus on that region too. Focus specifically on the region. They talk to a cool. lot of winemakers in that region and area. It's very, very cool. Hmm. Okay. Well, Carmela, it's just about time for us to go. But before we do, we want to thank you all very much for listening to us. And if you haven't done so yet, now would be a really great time to subscribe and also a great time to leave us a nice rating and review. And that's a great free way to support us and help us grow listeners. And we'd love to hear from you. So you can leave a message for us on our website at the wine pairpodcast.com you can email us at joe at the wine pair podcast.com you can follow us on instagram and threads now and Whoa. on instagram you can see pictures of the wines that we're tasting and reviewing and again the next time you listen to an episode drink along with us send us some ideas you have for wines you want us to try and maybe you know just see what we think about it and um with that we're gonna sign off so thanks again and we'll see you next time and like we like to say life is short so stop drinking shitty wine Bye-bye. bye bye